All right. What's up, Andy? You're on mute, my friend. <coughs> ah, sorry. Okay. Good that we're doing a sound test. How are you? How are you, Brian? Do yeah, I'm doing well. It's good to catch up with you. How have things been? I think we've not had one of these for a couple months, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We, uh, I think we skipped August and we skipped September. Uh, Three months. Lots of travel, a lot of activities happening around in the crypto space. Um, I think in August you were traveling and I think in September I was traveling. So. <laughs> oh yeah, conflicting schedules, but we're back on pace now and uh, crypto has been up and down since. So I think we've got a lot we can discuss here and um, we do. When we chatted pre-video, we were talking about ways we can identify when the recovery might happen, uh, if you want to call this a, a needed recovery, because it depends on perspective. It's been up a little bit over the past couple months, but it's down a bit over the last couple of weeks. So we're kind of in this yeah. choppy water area right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me just welcome everyone who's watching. You know, good morning. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're tuning in from. Uh, today, uh, over here, where it is, it's it's Thursday, uh, the 10th, uh, October 10th, 2024. And I believe it's uh, on the other side of the of the world. It's uh, Wednesday, the, the 9th of October. So welcome, everyone, and, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, we haven't seen you in a while, as, as we mentioned earlier. And I think we've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we're going to look at what's, I mean, as Brian mentioned, it's, it's been pretty choppy. Uh, it's been going up. It's got, been going down. It, it, um, and, and, we, and, and, but, but, you know, things have been interesting. We've had in the last two months that we haven't been on, there's been a lot of crypto conferences around the world. Um, I know one of the largest one was Token 2049 in Singapore that happened last month uh, in September. And I think in 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 um, August, uh, I can't remember which country it was in. It was either Korea or it was uh, in Bali. It was one of those. And then uh, here in Malaysia, we had ETHKL happen last weekend. So a lot has been happening. Um, what are we looking at, Brian? Yeah, I mean, in terms of markets, there have been uh, individual altcoins like Chili's that has been doing quite well. Ave had an amazing summer, and it's finally started to cool off a little bit. But many are still looking at it as a good long-term play there. Um, and then, of course, Bitcoin and Ethereum have been kind of just playing a little bit of water tread games as of late. And uh, it's causing frustration. Uh, especially from the younger crowd that is crypto, that is used to seeing huge swings in either direction that they can take advantage of. So flat performance is often like the last thing that anyone wants because shorters are having a hard time shorting and longers are having a tough time longing as well. Um, I'll share my screen here and we'll show some of the highlights that we're paying attention to at the moment. Sure. By the way, um, I see you have a nice new setup. Nice. Yeah. What do you think of the of the mic, Andy? Do I sound a little more clear? Yeah, absolutely, Crystal. Very good. Very good. Happy to yeah. hear that. Yeah, we made a little investment and and got a a much more modern streaming setup. So you guys will enjoy this uh, going forward when I come on as a guest here. This is cool. It's very good. Yeah. Now, in terms of the performances, so we look at social volume, right? Over the past thirty days pretty much down across the board among the top, top caps. You can see, you know, increases in discussion among many more obscure assets. Of course, Bit BitTensor is seeing over double the amount of discussion because it's been the best performer, at least among the top 100 market caps, going up 104% in the past 30 days. But, you know, Cardano significantly down, Binance Coin significantly down, even Bitcoin and Ethereum respectively, are seeing less discussion compared to the prior month. And if we went to the prior month, it would look the same. We've been on the a decline pretty much since July in terms of discussion rates. Uh, and that's what tends to happen when there's not much volatility in crypto. And you only see you know, three or four days out of each month, 
having any sort of significant, you know, four or five percent plus swings in either direction for Bitcoin. Um, but if we look at it from like a zoomed out perspective, right, 30 days, the performance has actually been pretty good. Bitcoin's actually up about 6% since September 9th. And it's, uh, you know, the big crash happened in August and we're still up relative to then. Um, but there have been a lot of bumps in the road along the way. You can see market caps and volume are actually down over the past week, nevertheless, even though 30 day, 30 day windows are looking a little bit better. And we can also look at things like, um, I just put this up earlier today. It's a very interesting time in terms of weighted sentiment. So for those who haven't seen our uh, data on Equities Tracker's channel before, what we do is we combine the overall social volume of every single asset that we're tracking. In this case, we have a little over 3,400 coins. And we look at the mentions on Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, 4chan, and Bitcoin Talk. And then we multiply that by the positive versus negative sentiment ratio. And you see a lot of familiar faces here when we look at only market caps that are above a billion dollars. Give or take, that's about 110 or so assets in crypto right now. And most of them at the very top are seeing significantly negative sentiment at the moment. Chainlink here, notably seeing a ton of FUD right now as it's still trying to stay above $10 at the moment. It's been on kind of a roller coaster. You can see each of them in their mini charts. Um, green means they're at least up in the past week. Red means they're down a bit in the past week. Um, but you get the idea. Chainlink, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, Optimism, XRP, these are all huge market caps uh, that are just not getting very much love at the moment. It's it's a very bearish outlook from the crowd. And you should be happy with that. If you're long in crypto, you're actually doing it as a contrarian compared to most of the crowd at the moment who are very iffy and scared and worried about the future of crypto at the moment, especially among top caps, Andy. Yeah, that's that's interesting to see. And um and, and you're right, you know, um uh, as as a contrarian myself, you know, when, when everyone's saying one thing, um just have you know have some critical thinking and, and, and ask ask the questions why and check the data uh you know on sentiment obviously and uh and, and this this very clearly shows uh what you've just mentioned that that the 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 majority of the crowd have been pretty negative and and are they negative uh, are, you know is there any 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 substance to why they're being so negative is there a reason for it in my opinion it's mostly simply related to price performance that's that's always the the number one driver of sentiment it's kind of a what have you done for me lately type of community <laughs> that we have here and if crypto <laughs> starts to struggle you know it, the all time yeah. high was about 7 months ago now and that's that's yeah. like years and years in in crypto age so i think a lot of people are getting a bit impatient at the moment yeah 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 it is it is and and, and it's interesting to to watch from the sidelines or if you zoom out and you take a longer term view it's um you know some some may view this as an opportunity others may be you know losing hope and saying that's it i'm done with crypto i'm moving back to whatever asset class it was that that they were they were dabbling into before that yeah exactly yeah so it's kind of a bearish outlook from the crowd we're happy about that it hasn't quite looked this bearish in quite some time so that definitely has us considering you know some other things for example the positive versus se negative sentiment ratio check this out it was quite positive actually yesterday but uh, you know, looking at a few news stories that are going on, such as the um, Gotbit uh, arrest that just happened. I'm not sure if you've heard about this yet, Andy, but uh, the, not yet. the founder was arrested on findings of fraud by the FBI. They actually used a fake cryptocurrency 
to get them to bite on it. Uh, in other words, they got bit on the FBI's uh, next fund AI token. So this was the most easy, easy pun of my life when I wrote this article just a few hours ago. I have to say that was pretty good. Pretty good uh, one. <laughs> how got bit got bit. Alexei Andriunin, if I'm pronouncing it right, um, was found guilty of a market manipulation scheme. And you can see I'm screenshotting the the people who rightly deserve the credit for uh, putting out this news. Um, mm -hmm. The FBI created their own coin called the Next Fund AI Token. I saw another post where someone accidentally audited the coin, uh, not realizing that it was FBI created. And now they're just like shocked that this was the, the bait and switch coin to arrest a big name in crypto. Uh, and, you know, they have a full on description in terms of what the coin was about. Uh, and it was all basically to get these guys to to bite on it. And they did. And uh, it, it ended up being a, a nail in the coffin for them. So there is some possibilities that that there's some negative reaction as a result of that that has turned things bearish. Uh, you can see Zach XBT, who I think most of the crypto community widely respects. Um, he said this a year ago that uh, there's some questionable tactics <clears throat> in terms of what they're doing. Uh, Gotbit at the time said in a private chat, during the first minutes in the price discovery stage, we're going to push the price up to 10x to create FOMO and accumulate as much buying power as we can to reach extreme Xs and sell maximum tokens on the subsequent spike. That was a year ago. <clears throat> he noticed that, put it out there, got some attention. Uh, I'd say more than some attention, actually, with 2.4 million <laughs> views. But regardless, nothing happened until... Here we are 13 months later, and uh, there's fi finally a uh, criminal complaint out that went out in Massachusetts, and the PDF is publicly available for those who want to see more. Uh, but wow. going back to my original point, you can see how the, the sentiment has actually taken a huge dip just today at the time of this recording. It's the lowest the sentiment has been toward Bitcoin since going back to that August 4th crash, uh, which threatened and actually did push Bitcoin temporarily below 50K. Well, and, and can I just add, you know, um, the, 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 the got bit incident. Um, I, I think incidents like these where, you know, law enforcement has come in and they've come in to take out the bad actors in, 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 in this growing industry. I think that's actually a good thing. Um, it's, you know, it shows that the crypto markets are maturing. We're, you know, we're, we're getting things in order. We're, you know, we're trying to weed out the bad actors. There, there, I mean, you know, there, there will always be elements of bad actors in, in capital markets, right? In, in, um, in any markets. But um, it, it's, it's how you, I guess it's the ratio of, and, and, you know, the, the more you can make it fair uh, and, and, and have it viewed or perceived as, as being fair, um, then the more, the, I guess the more liquidity you will see flow into um, the, the crypto market. So I, I see it as a, as a good, good thing that's happened here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. You want the bad actors in crypto to, to get caught and, and go to jail, even if some people were benefiting from, uh, you know, their, their questionable acts, the vast majority of people aren't. And uh, yes, some innocent people, always get hurt by this and and obviously sympathies to those people who did but uh with added transparency comes better and more a more trusted environment for everyone in crypto and it it also dissuades future people from doing what got yeah. did because they realize what the consequences are now so um yeah, yeah. Crypto's and, and, still a really know, young sector yeah go ahead yeah and just to add, I mean, you you see this happening in the stock market as well. It mm -hmm. just doesn't happen so often these days. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure in the early days, it was it was just as bad. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the stock markets have been around for 500 years, so I'm yeah. pretty sure in the early days, a, a lot of manipulation was was also happening. And yeah, uh, I mean, but mm -hmm. matured, yeah. Scammers and manipulators are going to try every possible thing that isn't yet against the rules until they're put in the rules, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think 
with with crypto. I, I think the stock market a hundred years ago is the perfect example. Uh, crypto is kind of going through what the stock market probably did in the twenties and thirties. Uh, albeit there was a great depression a hundred years ago, but regardless, I, I think that you have to go through your trials and tribulations in order to get some acceptable form of regulation. I know regulation is kind of a dirty word in crypto, but to a certain extent, uh, certain types of regulation are good and keep keep people from being screwed and being able to trust holding crypto in the first place. If you don't at least have regulation for protecting holders and traders, then who cares if there's, you know, more debatable regulation up for debate if you, you can't even hold on to your coins because of so many bad actors just plummeting and looting the the entire sector. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's it's and, and it was interesting to see the FBI set up a whole website and coin uh, to uh to 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 get to to bait this guy. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty cool. Uh, say what you will. Some people don't like the FBI's tactics at times, and, but uh, I think in this case, they did something pretty creative in order to uh, yeah. get the result they were looking for. Agreed. So one thing I also wanted to show here, as I think we usually do on this show, is just what the whales and sharks are doing. And it looks like it's business as usual, which is a good thing. They're continuing to accumulate more coins you can see they really started to pick things up about three weeks ago here, right around mid-September. And since September 15th, to be exact, they've added another 9,015 BTC to their wallets. This was the shaky time. You can see what happens when the bright green line kind of flattens out or moves down a bit. Price tends to go down because the sharks and whales are actually doing what they do rarely, which is dump or... Uh, decide not to accumulate. You can see the top formed here when the bright green line went down, top formed perfectly right here. Even right here, you can see prices went down every time the 10 plus BTC wallets went down. So I continue to view this as a top, very easy to digest indicator that gives you the roadmap as to what the powers that be in crypto are doing at any given moment. Curious, Brian. Uh, this would include the ETF wallets, won't they? Like this would include the. My understanding is that ETF wallets, the ones actually held by like BlackRock, are are going to be included because those are real wallets. They have to hold uh, liquid wallets in order to be included as investable by the community that invests in BlackRock, right, and all the other ETFs, but others money that pours into the BlackRock ETF, that money is not going to be accounted for because they're not putting in actual, they're not, they're not adding Bitcoin. They're adding dollars yeah. to justify BlackRock having an ETF that holds Bitcoin themselves. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Cool. So the only downside that I'm looking at here is that stable coins are still quite low. So if you're hoping that whales and sharks are adding a bunch of dry powder to really send Bitcoin's price up, that doesn't look like it's really happening. It just looks like a very steady accumulation while they wait for some of the retail traders to jump out, maybe get too impatient. Um, and then maybe we start to see them add on stable coins. But the last time we really saw like USD coin, this blue line go up was back from like late April to early June. And that was great for crypto. Bitcoin's price blossomed. But Tether's yep. been going down consistently the past six months. Regardless, I still think it's a good sign that the BTC line from sharks and whales is moving in the right direction. As long as that's the case, I tend to have limited fear as to what's going to happen next. Cool. Brian, just Going back to that chart, with, with USDT coming down and USDC also coming down, the, we, we interpret that as um, them, you know, being burnt, and then US dollars going into bank accounts, or would, or how would we interpret the, the those lines coming down? Usually, if the if the bright green Bitcoin line here is going up while stable coins are going down, 
it's fair to assume that most of these stable coins are just simply being swapped for BTC, which is fine and, and generally good for crypto. Uh, in an ideal world, we see you know, something like this, where Bitcoin is moving up rapidly along with at least one of the stable coins. Um, the only thing that would be really worrisome is if we started to see kind of like what we saw here, uh, where mm -hmm. Bitcoin was moving down. And then shortly after we saw USDC and Tether moving down also. That was a yeah. sign that we might be in for some, some, you know, scary moments, which ended up happening. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, I don't think they're swapping stable coins out for dollars. They're swapping them out yeah. for Bitcoin for the most part. So it's kind of a, a neutral to slightly positive sign in my eyes. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. Yep. Yep. So the other thing, I mean, we look at whales, we can also kind of look at the opposite side. And what's interesting here, actually just in the past, let me make sure this is, there we go. So just in the past like two weeks, we've actually seen quite a few non-empty wallet uh, increases happening on BTC. This is the net amount of total holders. So basically any wallets that are holding coins right now, that's what this line's accounting for. Generally, when it goes up, that's a sign that retail holders are rapidly creating more wallets with the anticipation that coins go up. Uh, when it goes down, that means they're getting scared. And oftentimes, as you might have guessed, when the line is moving down and retail holders are, are jumping off the cliff and getting out of Bitcoin, that's when some of the biggest bull rallies and relief bounces happen because the whales and sharks are just scooping up those coins and then driving up the price. So lately it's kind of been a slow rise among total holders. I'd like to see this kind of flatten out more, like this was a good sign, but you can see they really started to get FOMO around the 23rd, 24th, and then started accumulating and then boom, price drops. So root for flat or even negative total holders, uh, while you want to root for continually rising sharks and whales. So we've got half the equation going, but I'd like to see the the retail traders making a little less uh, wallets. And that might happen because we just saw in the past 24, 48 hours, the sentiment has flipped negative, maybe due to this got bit situation and who knows what else. Interesting. That is very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've got five minutes left. I'm curious what other things are on your radar right now, Andy. Are you checking out the equities situation at all? Yeah, I. You know, um, we. So just just to share a bit of news. Uh, last week, uh, here in Malaysia, the local regulator, uh, they're called the Securities Commission of Malaysia. They held a two day conference. And it was at their their venue. Uh, it was two full days, and the theme this year was tokenization. Mm -hmm. They they talked about tokenization. Uh, they they wanted institutional adoption of tokenization. They uh, you know the, their their crowd or the the target audience uh, were obviously the institutions, the institutional investors. So from a I guess from an industry perspective, I I see, I see the the industry maturing, uh, you know, regulations being put in place, the regulator themselves organizing a conference to talk about tokenization. So I I, I see that as a as a very positive sign, um, you know, regardless of what the price action is at the moment, I I see that as a uh, as a from a development perspective of the of a of a nascent industry um as a very positive positive sign um yeah so that's cool yeah with with the few minutes that we do have left what's if if we could quickly look at ethereum how's how's ethereum doing because i i think i'm hearing a lot of negative news on how 
you know, Ethereum is a solution looking for a, a problem to solve and how, you know, Solana is going to take over and all that. So it'll be interesting to see how Ethereum is doing. Yeah, I mean, I was hearing over a month ago uh, rumors that Vitalik was dumping coins and things like that, and that was creating kind of a negative uh, reputation for the number two market cap asset. Um, I, I don't, I don't think that really matters too much. How valid it is, and and even if it is valid, like Ethereum is is by far the leading ecosystem in crypto, as we can see on this chart. Uh, yeah. It's by far showing the most notable activity events on their GitHub uh, from any asset that's using the the Ethereum technology blockchain. It's it's more than double the nearest ecosystem in terms of daily activity events being pumped out by respective coders. So the the network overall and the tech is very healthy. Uh, you can even sort it by. Let's go. I mean, this is the past six months. You're seeing about a nine percent increase. If we go back like five years, you can see it's up four hundred thirteen percent over that time. So. In terms of it, just its overall activity, it's doing fine. In terms of its actual coin, ETH, uh, both the short and long-term trading returns are underwater right now at negative 3% for the 30-day traders and negative 15 for 365-day traders. That's a good sign. You want to be buying in when both the short and long-term lines are below zero. So that looks good to me. Funding rate isn't overly long or short. It's looking pretty neutral. Whale transactions are pretty down at the moment, but that's not really a sign that they're dumping or accumulating. It just means they're kind of sitting on their hands. Um, and then supply and exchanges is kind of going back up a little bit, but nothing too extreme there. Discussion rates are pretty low. Uh, this is a short sample size of just the, the first couple hours of today showing that yeah. uh, right now there's a lot of bearishness but that that'll even out over time i guarantee it yeah yeah uh but i'm not i'm not really seeing anything too special i mean the total amount of holders is by far the most out of any coin out there um i can show you for comparison top cap holders just the amount of non-empty wallets per coin here if i put them mm -hmm. on a shared axis that's ethereum here in yellow so it's it's head and shoulders above all other assets out there. And I can take shared access off and you can still see it's just climbing and climbing over time. So I don't see any any issues with Ethereum, but I also don't see anything that's popping out like it's about to have a huge pump either. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, look, I, I think to maybe to, to finish off, uh, just from a, an institutional perspective, I uh, I've been talking to to, to a few uh, people. It, it seems like Ethereum is the de facto or the preference for uh, holding larger amounts of uh, value, like in in terms of for uh, for institutional investors, if they were to travel uh, transfer very large amounts of stablecoin, uh, they would they don't mind paying extra fees on layer one Ethereum uh, because, uh, oh, and this is just uh, conversations that, that I've had, uh, they, they, they actually prefer to, uh, uh, to transfer them on Ethereum because they feel it's the most decentralized one of, of, of the, um, uh, the layer one chains. So yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That's fair yeah, to say. I mean, to sentiment, know. sentiment has a similar mindset. We, we trust Ethereum a lot. Um, and have uh, a long track record of of following ETH and, and uh, most of our analytics and data are based on Ethereum based assets, obviously. So that shows what kind of trust we have in it. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're not promoting Ethereum as a coin to go buy or whatever. But I, I, I'm just saying. You want? I'm just sharing the conversations that I've had in the last couple of months. Uh, especially when we were down in Singapore at Token, um, it's yeah, it's it's interesting, and and we tend to see a lot of the newcomers being attracted to the Solana blockchain, 
Um, they do throw pretty cool events and parties and all that. I, I would give them that. Um, but ultimately, I guess for a very large institutional investor, the fact that Solana seems to be a more centralized or centrally controlled blockchain where, uh, you know, they, I know back in 2021, 2022, they, you know, they had to restart it a few times. Um, and the fact that one entity or an entity has that, that ability to do so is, uh, can be scary for larger investors, investors to hold larger amounts of value on that blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I'll, we'll put it this way, whether it's Ethereum or Solana, just because it has a reliable network that many people trust doesn't mean that it's going to be the uh, de facto ecosystem you should invest in for the biggest gains. Those are separate conversations. Um, so yes. if it's about trustability, yes. you know, we can Absolutely. have a debate about it. But uh, in terms of price predictions and and future movements that we might see, we we tend to look at a lot of factors and don't play favorites whatsoever. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Brian, it's been great catching up. Haven't seen you in uh, in two months. You're looking good. <laughs> Thanks, my friend. So, you as well. Yeah, looking forward to our next one next month. Me too. Yeah, we've got plenty we're going to be discussing as we get toward the end of the year here. Obviously, we're going to be right at that point where the U.S. decides its next president, and that's going to cause a lot of a lot of volatility, oh. I guarantee yeah, next month's call is going to be exciting. When did when when do you know when the elections are uh, next month? Checking the exact yeah. date. Uh, election. Next we'll just say poll results date. General election November fifth. So we'll be right after we get those those results oh, yeah. coming in. If we're going four weeks from now. Yeah, so if you're tuning in, don't miss next month's next month's call. Can't wait, my friend. All right. Well, you have a good one. And thank you for tuning in, guys. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye, Andy. Take care. Bye, Brian.